Hey guys, Artosis here with the Cast Music Rockstar League Season 4. This is the round of four, a best of seven between Yabsab and Stork. If you haven't seen the previous games, now is the time. The series is awesome. It's tied up two to two. Uh, we've really seen a big range from the players on both sides. And, like, honestly, I'm still kind of leaning towards Stork taking it down. I feel like even when he's losing, he's still looking pretty darn good. Whereas some of the Yabsab losses feel like he got outplayed. And I guess, you know, you shouldn't really expect much else. Stork is one of the greatest players of all time. One of the most successful players ever, especially for Protoss. So this map is Ultimate Stream. And this one does worry me for Stork a little bit because... Uh, Zerg tends to do very, very well here against Protoss. I've seen very few Protoss versus Zerg victories on the map. Uh, and that's because most Zergs go for a very turtle-heavy style here. Uh, they end up taking another natural, because if you look at these natural expansions, uh, there's a ramp going up. So, like, let's say a Zerg takes another natural, they just defend a ramp, and then suddenly they have four bases, and it's extremely hard for Protoss uh, to actually push in. So, you know, that being said, it's uh, it's one that could be very, very tough here for Stork. But he actually, I think his build order here, he's, uh, I guess he's kind of lucky in a way because it's a nine pool from Yabsab. And he's scouting him first and he went gate. A lot of players on this map go Nexus first and even Nexus first into gateway is trendy because it's such, it's like so easy to defend on the map that you get greedier and greedier and greedier because your opponent doesn't ever attack. Yabsab thought of that and went for the quick pool, but actually it's not going to work out for him because Stork has scouted him first and gone for a gateway instead of a nexus. So, very good job here for Stork. He's got to be happy with this result. Uh, you know, I think if you if you use this opener and you're playing like against an over pool or something, you can or a, a twelve pool or a twelve hat, maybe you look at it and you say, eh, okay, but I could have gone nexus first, right? <laughs> not in this case. Throws down that pylon to block, and the Ling's going to come up and try to get the probe. Obviously, getting the probe is the biggest thing. He does end up snapping its neck, so that's good. He's going to be able to force a cancel on the pylon. Forge coming up. Of course, he saw that there was no gas, so it's you don't really think it's an all-in from Yabsab. Hatchery goes down at the natural, and looks like Stork is just going to go ahead and make a nexus. As you can see, this is all tight here, uh, and this is actually the only hole in the wall, so it's uh, going to be hard for Yabsab really to get very much done with these Zerglings. Another Zealot pops out, and Stork scouting the other natural. Like I mentioned, this is this is how Zergs generally play the map, and it's so hard to break uphill against like Hydra, Sunken, uh, Lurker with a good Sim City. It's just very, very difficult. Beautiful micro there from Yabsab. Takes a bunch of damage on some of the Lings, but kills the Zealot basically for free. Stork actually still not making the Nexus. Huh. He has this probe down here. It'd be hilarious if he does something cheesy with that probe. That's not something you see in this matchup very often. Okay, finally going to go ahead and throw down that Nexus. Another pylon going down as well. So, I mean, it looks like a lot of games that I've seen on the map, right? We have these little scuffles early on and whatever, but... At the end of the day, the Zerg is taking another natural, and here is Stork, uh, you know, just expanding and getting up his tech tray a little bit. Now, pokes out. Yeah, notice the probe hold positioning behind the Zealot, so that the Zealot can actually walk out of the hole and do damage to the Zerg. So he's trying to make it so they won't harass the gate anymore. He's trying to make it so he doesn't actually have to make um, a, a cannon here. He'd much rather go into core before the cannon, if possible. And that's one thing that I talked about at the beginning. Yeah, there's the core. Uh, I talked about this at the beginning of the series, how I feel like Stork is someone that I've seen uh, kind of go down the same road as Mini very, very well, where he's getting extremely greedy. Like, look, second gas, no cannon still. And we haven't seen that so much in this series, but I think Stork has played the series very well, so I can't really fault him for it. It's, it's not something that always fits these greedy openers. But in this game, it's working out really, really well. Like, he's got plenty of units. He doesn't need the cannon yet. He's he's read the situation magnificently. Now, is he going to put a cannon down? No, he's going to go Stargate, too. Look at this. Stargate before a cannon. This is the new PVZ, guys. Really cool stuff to see. 
Now, Ling coming down maybe to scout around for that probe. He knows he hasn't seen the probe in quite some time. A lot of Zealots are out. Let's see if plus one starts pretty soon. Ah, plus one air attack. So getting that actually before the plus one on uh, ground attack. Kind of interesting. This circling going to find that probe. Oh, but, you know, he kind of shift clicked it around most likely. So I think he didn't realize that he actually gained vision of it. Doing a lot of things at once in StarCraft 1. Now the Spire coming up. Here's that Photon Cannon at the wall. Finally, look at that. The cannon doesn't even start until 5.30. So that is pretty late. Pretty greedy so far from Stork. Really, it's it's awesome to see, though. The, just the, the understanding of StarCraft become deeper and deeper and deeper. Where you can cut more and more and more corners. Like, really, if you take someone from the past and show them what professional play looks at, like at this point, they are going to be pretty shocked. Ooh, second Stargate. Okay, I was wondering about this because he did skip out on that plus one uh, attack for the Zealots. So, he's actually going double Stargate into Citadel. So, he's going to have a lot of Corsairs. If, yeah... If uh, Yabsab actually decides to go Mutas, which it looks like he's going to since he's getting Flyer Carapace, which, of course, Stork can't see, uh, that's going to be huge for Stork, right? You don't want to show that you're going Mass Corsairs, but he is going to have quite a few of them. Now, the Ling's running away. This Corsair kind of flying back. He does see another Overlord. Looks like he wants to put pressure on towards this bottom right base. Okay, second Corsair comes, attacking this Overlord. Of course, the Corsairs he makes out of this one, I'm sure that he will hide for now. You do not want to show that you're two Stargate Corsair. It'll change the way that Zerg is playing immensely. All right, so he gets that first Overlord. Oh, he's just going to get away from the Scourge, it's looking like. Very well done. The Zealot's coming down towards this bottom right base. Oh my god, there's a pile on here now. <laughs> so Stork's Probe, which has been so, like, it's been so careful... It's been so quiet and so patient. And now Yabs have finally scouts it. So that will get taken out. I think he was going to make a cheeky gateway there. Maybe warp in it or create a DT. This is not StarCraft 2. Uh, yeah, and that, that would have been kind of funny if that had ended up working out for him. All right, so that pylon going to go down. Another gateway for Stork. Still just making up his uh, Corsair count. We haven't seen anything quite yet here for... Uh, for tech other than that, right? Like, he's making a DT. Has that plus one about halfway done. Still hasn't shown the Corsairs. There's six of them, seven now. Going out across the map. There are some Mutas. Okay, okay. And he's going to catch this pretty strongly. Look at that. Gets rid of the Scourge immediately. Turns and fires there as well on the other Scourge. Oh, my God. These Corsairs are going to do so much damage. Muta's popping as they do come out. Plus one, of course, already done for these, but not done on the Spire. Corsair's going across, just looking for Overlords absolutely anywhere that they can. A spore being made. This is going to be probably where he focuses Overlord production now. There are some Muta's over here in that bottom right. Corsair is still just kind of flying around, looking around this base for more Overlords. One of them ends up dying, but look, he's still got six with that plus one. Still producing two at a time as well. See if he ends up getting the value he's looking for out of this. Zod's come up and fight, but that's actually very one-sided. Getting here on top of the Overlords as a DT walks in. Beautiful move here from Stork. The DT actually does get detected by another Overlord that sneaks up from that back main base. Great move from Yabsab, saving his drone line, saving his economy quite a bit. Now, the Corsairs continue to gather up eight of them here with that plus one. Ooh, another one ends up dying. But still, he's getting that damage. Look at the supplies. 47 of 38 right now. Looking amazing for Stork. Still flying around. Nine. Is he making more? Look at that. He's going to go up to the full 11 here. Of course, you see the probe tra uh, trap behind the minerals. That's grouped with the Corsairs so that he can stack them up like they're Mutalisks. <laughs> Another DT making its way across the map. Of course, we do have spores starting to appear all over the place, as he does know that Stork wants to get DTs in. Stork with a third base going down. 
Has that plus one armor on the way. We don't see the big production. Oh my god. Like, look at this from Stork. He has got a full 10 Corsairs with plus one. He's only got three gateways right now. He's taking a third base. You never, ever, ever see stuff like this. But he's had such control of what's going on in this game. The fact that he has DTs out and Overlords can't make it anywhere. Like, he can get away with this. And that's awesome to see from Stork. It really feels like he is dominating this game right now. The Overlords over here could be picked off. There's only one Spore there. We see a few Scourge still kind of patrolling the map, looking for, like, just a random Corsair kill. Corsairs come to the bottom right. Just seeing the drones hatch out. Let's take a look up here. Yeah, Yapsab has a pretty healthy drone count, obviously. 54 drones is, is an awesome economy. Looks like he does find another uh, Overlord there. A lot of Scourge incoming. Oh, only gets one Corsair. So Stork's Corsairs continue to bring him huge, immense amounts of value. Look at that. Eight kills, five kills, one kill. I mean, a lot of those are uh, Scourge, but Mutas and Overlords as well. All right, third base is up in mining. It's time for Stork to make 100 gateways and just roll Yab Sab over, I think. Well, maybe it won't be that easy, because like I said, uh, these turtle positions are extremely difficult to break. He's got the sunken colony. He's got the spores. We don't see it yet, but I'm sure lurkers have to be on the mind uh, here for, for Yabsab. Okay, getting Hydra speed. I guess he feels like he has a little bit longer. And honestly, he is right. Like, you can't attack yet a stork because his gateway count is so, so late. Even though he has a lot more supply right now. Uh, he's not going to have, like, a full frontal, like, base-breaking attack for a while, I think. Now, the Corsairs come out. They're going to catch a couple more Overlords. Always annoying here for Yabseb, who, by the way, Yabseb is getting plus two Flyer Carapace, which I think is a smart move here. Ah, Dark Templar in the shuttle, as well as Zealots. A few more Zealots here. And I think he wants to drop into this back right main. That's going to be a hugely powerful move. Corsair's coming in, <coughs> killing off some Overlords at that, at that third base. He has a single Lurker, a single Sunken, Single spore, two lings. Yeah, I mean, this can do fantastically. Okay, the Lurker burrows. He's going to run away from it for now. He does not have detection here, so the Lurker can't really be dealt with. The Lurker's very powerful in this situation. Looks like he's just going to attack into here, just getting away from the Sim City. Not going to be blocked this time. Gets on top of those Sunkins. The DT going after drones right now. Where are those Corsairs? They're actually over here. They'd be very useful if they were over in this area, but looks like uh, he's still going to get okay damage, but it will get cleaned up here from Yabseb. Okay, looking back at Stork's base. Yeah, he's added a lot of gates now. We have nine gates, ten gates, eleven gates, two forges, although only one is upgrading at the moment. Hive finally going to be finishing up here for Yabseb, so definitely going to get into Adrenal upgrades as well as the Defiler Mound. All right, Stork coming out with a much more real army at this point. His supply is super high. He's on 70 probes, though. Don't forget, that is a huge, huge economy. Fourth base being taken. It, honestly, this is, like, such impressive Protoss play. And once again, it's Stork. I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but he does go through rough patches. Uh, like, for instance, not qualifying for the ASL Season 11, but uh, here showing that he's still got what it takes. But Yabsab, even though he's taken a lot of damage this game, even though Stork has dominated many portions of this game and definitely dictated the way the game has had to be played, he knows how to defend. He's got the Lurkers all over the place, burrowed down, ready to throw out that splash damage. Look at this. Three Sunkins, multiple Lurkers here as well. Nidus is starting to go up, so he can reinforce these positions very, very quickly. It's going to be hard for Stork to break in anywhere. But... Oh my god, Fleet Beacon. I love it. I wanted to mention this, that in this type of situation, I would love uh, to see a defensive web. The web is just... It's awesome against Stag D, obviously, right? Like, you just throw it over the Sunkins, and you're not going to be able to do any uh, damage with those Sunkins, right? They just don't attack at that point. We almost never see it, but I love that Stork Scan the Fleet Beacon. If he adds carriers in, too, that's amazing. If he gets plus two attack, that's amazing. It's just something we don't see often. And it's exciting to see it from Stork. Uh, 
All right. We have Consume coming up right now for the Defilers. Stork just kind of roaming the map. Another base coming up for Yabsab. That's very common for this to be base number five in these spots on Ultimate Stream. Looks like Stork's going to roll through. Obviously, he has to cancel if Stork comes towards him. No real defense there. If you Scourge on the edge. A lot of Lurkers still being burrowed all over the place. I am really excited about the Fleet Beacon, though, guys. That's the main thing. Okay, so that's that's D-Web. I'm fairly certain. I don't even know what the, the upgrade looks like in Remastered, but I'm guessing that has to be it. This is going to be really exciting to see Stork try to break all the positions with D-Web. All right, Lurker's burrowing in. Woo, they're going to get the probe. It was almost an invincible probe. Stork backing up for now. Right, Stork going into the middle of the map. Okay, he does have Kadaran Amulet almost done for, uh, <laughs> for the the the, uh, the High Templars. I'm laughing because I see this. Okay, maybe that's D Web. I don't even know, guys. But <laughs> it's one of them's. Uh, maybe it, the other one was Corsair Energy, or maybe that one's Corsair Energy. I don't know. Anyways, it's exciting to see him get these upgrades that we don't even know what they are. Uh, Stork is really playing a different game here. Okay, storms go down. Stork just walking over here. Looks like he, his main aim might be to get rid of this base. I think he might be able to pick off some of the buildings here as well with his overwhelming Dragoon count. But not sure if that's the actual aim. Corsair's still kind of patrolling. It seems like that's almost an anti-drop location he had him sitting in. Fifth base will get canceled. A lot of units coming up here from Yabsab. I don't see the Defiler with it. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Okay, there's the Defiler. Definitely when you start moving around with an army like this, this late in the game, that is something that you're thinking about. Oh, and the D-Webs go down. Okay, so he forces those Lurkers back very, very well. D-Web is almost the opposite of the Dark Swarm here, really destroying something like a Lurker. Love to see it. And it has to catch Yabsab off guard. Like, I... I mean, I watch almost every single pro game, and you never, you literally never see it. Last time I saw D-Web was in a weird shuttle PVT from like three years ago. So awesome to see from Stork. Those cores here is really going to provide a lot of value here later in the game. You thought they were annoying before. Now your static D doesn't even work anymore. All right, they come in, clear out this overlord. A nice army here comes up, and Stork's fifth base looks like it's going to get killed off. He tried to sneak this a little bit, but got out of position, and these army, this army like kind of coming through and getting rid of that, that does slow him down quite a bit. Looks like he's going to make a new fifth base right outside the the main base here of, uh, of Yabsab. So, yeah, he's trying to... He's really trying to just get more bases, which I love to see, and I also love that Stork is not just suiciding into these defended locations either. You see a lot of high-end Protoss players, even a lot of Protoss pro gamers that just start attacking. They're like, well, I have a lot. Let's try to kill them. It's like, nope. Stork is Stork is sitting here just getting every upgrade. He's getting like observer upgrades, speed and vision. Uh, he's got, you know, Corsair energy. He's whatever the hell that's called. No one even knows what that's called. Uh, he has the D-Web, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just playing such a different game. Now the only thing that's really missing here is Reavers and Dark Archons. Plus two air attacks on the way. He's getting Plasma Shield upgrades. 2-1-2 two, two on his uh, ground units right now. Yabsab is getting close to max supply though. Which is something you have to watch out for. Like Zerg at max supply is so, so, so fearsome. Now Stork is sitting there. He's at the max supply. He has a lot of spellcasters. He has a lot of interesting things going on. But the plagues are something that could grind him down over time. All right, this little group in the center being caught. Obviously can't do too, too much. Looks like he's just focusing on trying to deny this bottom left for as long as is possible. This is actually just a crazy game right now. They're both going to be maxed out. Uh, I want to say that Stork is winning, and I think he is winning right now, but I can absolutely see Yabsab coming back and taking this game. Like, I just, I'm not sure how Stork is supposed to finish him. 
I guess, is is the main thing here. Uh, we see a second Robo is being made, so definitely that means a lot more shuttles. Reavers should be added in as well. So maybe he's adding Reavers to his pushes. That definitely would make sense. All right, a big push coming in with a Defiler there. Gonna eliminate these Zealots. Try to push forward. Ooh, that's a very good Storm. Another nice Storm does go down. Gonna pull these back for now. Under that Dark Storm, of course, these cannons don't do anything. Hydras that pop out do get killed off. Of course, these Dragoons also do not do anything. Gotta get some other units in there. Oh, another Dark Storm attack actually takes out this space. Oh my god, yeah, see what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm turning this game on its head. Stork is still maxed. He's still got a great army and everything. But losing a couple Nexuses would be huge. Of course, for Yamsev catching up. We still see all these uh, Dragoons doing absolutely nothing here but take damage. All right, some more Storms go down. That one Lurker under there, almost invincible. Finally, a Storm goes down. And, of course, you got to remember that, actually, Archon attacks are ranged, but they have splash damage to them. So one Lurker underneath can't really be hit. You have to put a unit on top of it to attack. This is killing me. Okay, throws the storm down. Oof, a lot of damage being dealt. Okay, I think a plague going to come up. Yeah, nice plague goes down. Another group of units going down here to that bottom left. Oh my god, is Stork going to end up losing this game? This is actually getting out of control. Stork is down below max supply. He's remade this Nexus, not even close to done. He still has this one, very little mining. Main base mined out. Natural mined out. Third getting low. I'm nervous for him now. He was playing such a nice game, but you can see just how powerful a Zerg with this big of an economy is. The Defiler's doing so much work throughout this game. He has his own fifth base up now. A lot of lurkers there as well. Oh, looks like we did have a pretty big drop over here. The D-Web's being kind of hilarious as the Zealots themselves get stuck under there as well. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem like he's going to quite kill this base, though. Still a healthier drone count than probe count now, which is very nice for Yabsab. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh... I do feel like this is becoming Yabsab favored. He's got more supply at this point. He's, he's got his bases up in mining. He's kind of denying this bottom left, which is really painful for Stork as well. What does Stork have? Okay, he's got... I mean, he's got great upgrades. 3-2-2 is awesome. He's got a good amount of Archons. Some Dragoons, some High Templars, some Zealots. Still got his Corsairs, which continue to add value throughout the game, which is cool. But yeah, the Defiler's marching in. This is getting a little bit sloppy from Yabsab. All right, a Plague goes down. Not the best Plague, honestly. He gets a pre-Plague Dragoon. He gets an Archon. They don't care. So it's basically a Plague on one Dragoon. That's not a good trade for a, a Defiler. Both sides pretty low on money, unable to max out. Yabsab has taken this 12 o'clock base. Of course, we see an observer over it. So that observer uh, allowing Stork to know that he's going to have to hit that base eventually. That might be the easiest place to kill right now, honestly, if he can get his army around to it. Once again, another denial at the bottom left. Of course, there's coming by. Sweep out some of these overlords that go through the center. Wow, this is getting to be a lot of lurkers right now. Defilers really making stuff difficult for Stork. Looks like we might see another attack into this area. Looks like Stork is... Well, he's actually zoning it pretty well. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! This is a huge moment. Killing off two full energy Defilers that were waiting there. Okay, there are a couple more behind. Gonna go ahead and consume very, very quickly. Looks like the lurkers have been moved. Oh my god, but he has no detection over there. Some big storms go down. And look at this. The DTs are massacring these lurkers. The lurkers decide to come up and fight elsewhere since he has no detection in the area. The D-Web's going down and stopping a lot of those storms. Amazing. He D-Web's them as well so they can't attack. What am I even looking at? This is insanity. Stork is breaking in. He storms the night is where everything pops out. Tons of damage dealt there. Another massive storm goes down. And Stork, despite losing all of his bases, is suddenly everywhere. Con so many cotton balls, it's like a pharmacy or something. Just destroying all that Yabsab has left over. Look at Yabsab's supply just plummet. I bet you he didn't think he was going to end up losing to mass D-Web 
and three DTs on top of his Lurker Clump. Look at this. Getting in here. Going to be able to take down a lot of this tech defilers. The Spire. Uh, the Hive. The Spawning Pool. What are we going to have left for Yabsab? Not a whole lot. He does have the Hydrogen down here, so he can still go Lurker. He's remaking the Defiler Mound before he loses Hive. There's the Spawning Pool. Very important to make Defiler food. Leaving DTs in here. Mass Archon. Looking elsewhere. Gonna kill off this one Lurker. Ooh, Hydra's a very good counter to the Archon. They're gonna start turning around here. That was a good storm. And he does end up turning to fight to actually try to take on these Zerglings. Oh my god, these are such crazy moments in this game. Uh, Zealots and Itumblers coming up to flank those Hydras. Bottom left, still unable to be taken. A DT gonna clean that out. Stork almost done mining out his fourth base. His third base just about clear. His fifth base, really the only one that's kind of healthy left. Whereas we have this healthy base. This one's getting low. This one's still pretty healthy. So Yabsab has, in many ways, a better economy. But his army, not quite as good right now. We have a big army supply advantage uh, for Stork. He's got 323 upgrades, which is about as high as you ever see Protoss upgrades. This is just amazing to see all these high-tech units. God. <laughs> All right, Defiler comes over. Does get a really nice plague there on those Zealots. Definitely very annoying to deal with. A lot of them going red, but great storms come down as Stork continues to push forward. Another great storm on the clumped up lurkers. Picks off that Observer, which is nice. Very low health, though, on everything. Another storm onto the Hydras. Ooh, losing three. Baiting out Lurker Spines, figuring out where they're at. I love the Lurker being added in as well, but no Observer at the moment. Okay, here comes his Observer. Don't forget his speed and sight range. DT still hunting some of these Hydras. Game kind of slowing down as they take stock of where they're at and how to fight in these, these strange situations. Really, neither of them can refill their army when it's gone. We're going to see if Stork can be cost-efficient here, as he has been. Can Yabsab just kind of bulldoze his way through? Starts to come up this ramp and realizes that that does not look like a good engagement. Stork coming down. Stork right now up about 70 supply. And, yeah. I mean, the Lurkers are scary. They're hard to engage. It's just with the size Storms. With everything that Stork has at this point, I think he's I think he's going to be able to close this out. Like, Yabsab just doesn't have enough anymore. He can kind of hold on defensively, but even these plagues we're seeing are not that valuable anymore. Okay, here we go. Comes forward with those Hydras. Going to have to back up. Ooh, the High Templar there with two Storms. Got to watch out. Okay, Yabsab pushing forward. I think he realizes that he can't let him have bottom left. If... Stork gets bottom left, that should secure the game for him. It's, it's just, that's where most of the resources are left on the map, are those two bottom left bases. So Yabsab starts to attack, and ooh, he catches the probe transfer. That's huge. That'll slow the economy down quite a bit. That gives him a little bit more time to work with. All right, Stork coming forward. Trying to clear out some of those lurkers. A lot more being morphed. And, well, I mean, the DTs continue to be annoying. Do get picked off there by the Lings as an Overlord comes. More coming for that detection. The Reaver being really, really valuable. I think this is the only Reaver we've had this game, but it's actually done a hell of a lot. Eight kills on it now. Creeping forward. Oh, my God. There's, like, no Hydras. The Corsairs can just massacre. Oh, never mind. There are more Reavers. <laughs> two more up here. So three Reavers, four High Templars, Archon, two Cannons, and a Zealot. The Commander. Amazing for Stork. I don't think it can be broken, honestly. Look at this. Oh my god, the rest of his army coming as well. Okay, Yabsab, I feel like this is going to be his last-ditch effort here. He has to break this area. Okay, a Plague goes down. The D-Webs come out. Oh my god. Just crazy stuff here. And Stork gonna hold on easily. 
easily holds on here. Yab sab. Very little remains. Still mining. Some. But I think losing that army, you're just you're not gonna get it back. Stork is gonna get further and further ahead here. And that's it. GG Stork on match point.